same exact thing I did with Kristen and Taryn. Just unplugged it, plugged it back in. Oh, uh, you uh, interviewed them? Yeah. Well, I got yeah, some they, questions about that. They came, <laughs> they came in town. Uh, uh, we're I, recorded, so don't say anything. Okay, it's live. Crazy. <laughs> okay. Now we're going now. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, good kids. <laughs> Never mind. Good kids. L- LSU. But yeah, they, they just left because uh, they were in town. Did. They, they took a road trip. We're here for yeah. a month. And then they just drove back. Kristen just put up a video. Have you seen the snowstorm in Kansas City right now? No. They're doing, it's like some volleyball convention there. And they got like two feet of snow. No. <laughs> That's like, you they're, can turn they're, back. they're in the middle of all that? Yeah. Like driving back? That sucks. Yeah. I know, I know, like their, whatever their coach was driving. He drove like 27 hours straight or something, however yeah. long it took. I saw them for one day when I was out here. They came to the gym. And they threw uh, some sort of baseball at the wall for 30 minutes straight. Angry. <laughs> Very angry uh, beach volleyball players. <laughs> Made a mark in the uh, wall. But I went home and told my wife, I was like, man, we need to start throwing some balls at the wall. <laughs> Is that so, the secret? <laughs> no. They side out well enough, so. He's constantly bringing information back to Florida State. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ca- maybe they did that in front of me just to be like, oh, this idiot's going <laughs> to... You're going to see Florida State start throwing things against the wall. <laughs> Why but, does all the Florida State girls have soldier surgery? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't believe how hard they were throwing. Like, running starts. And, Is this uh, part of their training, or they're just screwing around? They did it for 30 minutes straight. Oh, wow. So I guess it was part of their training. Oh, we should have asked about that. <laughs> we should have. Cats out of the bag. I, I really wanted to ask. Someone needs to find out. But it was the first day at the USA facilities. I mean, maybe they just wanted to. <laughs> when Christian leaves, it's just anarchy now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Never it was a little Arby's bit. running the gym now. Yeah. It's, it's a <laughs> they, they, they hired a, a new, new guy. Yeah. Miles, I met him uh, yesterday. Florida State fan, so right yeah. there, it's an upgrade from Christian. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah. Anyways, Christian, uh, Christian was solid. He was a good addition to the, to yeah. the crew. But one of the most important things to our strength and conditioning coaches are you fun to hang out with on the road? Yeah, Christian was awesome. Check that box he was good for morale. Sure. Yeah, good morale, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be missed for sure. Um, what did they those girls talk about? What are they gonna play internationally? They're just gonna sign up for everything, mm-hmm. hope for wild cards. Did you ask them? Uh, about other girls asking them to play? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they're open, but don't want to, but they're open. They're open chance. now? Well, they don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and it's say it then. strictly saying they don't want to, but... Yeah, for sure. I get it. someone wants to give them free points by... I get it. Up with them I reached out, actually, uh, randomly. I played in college. I played with Kristen, the defender. Yeah. Her, She has an older brother who is two years older than me, and Pete? I played... Yeah, Pete. So I played against him uh, okay. when I was in college for fun, and I reached out to Pete. Because I had heard some girls had reached out, and they said, no, no, no. And I was just like, hey, man, I understand that. I said, it's a little different process. They might want to think about mm-hmm. splitting up for a little bit and getting back together. Otherwise, they're not going to have a shot. Yeah. And I was like, man, should I send this? I, I, I was pretty long, and it's out of my box to kind of give anyone any info. And I said, whatever, I just sent it. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, hey, if Kristen has any questions or anything, you know, feel free to, to ask me. Yeah. And uh, Pete wrote me back. He's like, thanks. He's like, uh, you know, appreciate the offer. But these girls have great chemistry and they want to stick together. Right. I was like, okay. Good luck. Uh, I was like, man, it's going to be a tough, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. Not totally. saying they can't, they can't do it, but they're really uh, it's behind. It's an opportunity. And then especially with the schedule this year. I mean, people that are ranked 20th in the world are complaining about opportunity it right now. Tops yeah. is on the reserve list. The guy who finished fourth at the Olympics is on the reserve list for challengers. Yeah, <laughs> he's that? so, that's oh, crazy. Wait, what? Yeah, really? that's he's uh, like lower than Sander Sandcraft. He's fourth. I think his guy doesn't have any points. Yeah. So him, cool. <laughs> yeah. So him and Plavins might have to get no, back together. For sure. And I, I mean, everyone's kind of had. I don't. I don't know any teams that started from zero together and went all the way up. From zero. I'm sure uh, there has been, but... Uh, I mean, look, I just, like, look at Kelly and Sarah when they came out of college, the most dominant mm-hmm. college team, and they even struggled, and, uh, so, but... They got a wild card or two, though, right? 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they did. I don't, I don't remember exactly their world tour finishes or history. I just mm-hmm. know, you know, it didn't work out for them together. Right. And even playing, because I had heard some of the top players reached out to them, and you know, both both of them kind of shined them down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just in the like learning process of like, what do you mean? <laughs> We're on, like, a great path together and all this. Yeah. And then it's like, what do you mean you want us to break up? Like, oh, yeah, that's... Uh... Like, you're not really breaking up. Like, honestly, if you didn't play with Hayden... Yeah. The, so the year that Hayden and I partnered up on the AVP, Nick and Hayden went on the world tour. And they got some points together, which pulled me at least into, like, the country quotas. Yeah. Which gave us that last seed in the country quota that we won that we... Got into like yeah. Berlin. And all I wanted to do was, <laughs> yeah, learn from John. I was like, right. uh, I'm gonna be a blocker and play left side, and play with John. I was like, uh, it was that or Brad Keenan, mm-hmm. and uh, I love Brad Keenan. He's a great guy. I was like, John, let's go. Just, just teach me whatever you you can. And he did. I, I learned a lot from John. And but yeah, that gave him the opportunity to play on the world tour. Picked you up, mm-hmm. and then luckily, I I was able to talk Theo to quitting indoor. And the same year, yeah. ended up picking up Theo. Um, and yeah. Were you, you Which blocking for Hayden? That wasn't your first <coughs> international, was it? No, no, no. No. That was that, like way after. That was after Ferbs. That was okay. Ferbs. That, yeah. was, um, that was tough. I, I was going to retire because Brooke was pregnant. You know, Ferby re- uh, retired, Sean Scott retired. So I was kind of out of a partner. Yeah. And. Um, for some reason, that year, 2013, they said no more country quotas. It's just your top four teams are going to be in the tournaments. Hmm. Uh, and so um, John and I didn't have to play any country quotas, so John and I were still in it, and we were terrible. Even though we beat Allison and Emmanuel. <laughs> from that, uh, biggest, that's, yeah. that's a good Blocked Allison resume. for a match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, at Long Beach. That's that sneaky. Whenever you see the sneaky yeah. small defender, yeah. you know they're diving low at low yeah. angle. <laughs> I imagine remember being real big and spread blocked. And, uh, <laughs> nah. That's what you remember. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but I was going to be done because for three years we were in the main draw, me and Furby. Yeah. And then I had to start all over. There was no real blockers. Try was, you know, up and coming. Or you just started, I guess. I remember I went to a practice and and it was with uh, I think is when you started playing with uh, Brad Keenan for a minute. Yeah. When I was like really raw coming out, and and Tony Chirelli was there. I tried asking him to play. I know this guy wanted to play with Tony. I was like, oh, yeah. This guy you want to play with Tony. On the I, I didn't oh, know. <laughs> Hey, well, Tony would uh, <laughs> Tony would help uh, Furby and I because he had a rocket serve. Honestly, Tony would have been gnarly if he stayed. Yeah. He, he's a little slow, but... Yeah, I know. mean, you know, I guess he had his own... I don't even know what he's, what's he doing. He was. I liked him. He was a good, no, good guy. He, he just was over it. Like, he's the kind of guy that's just like, no, I'm not playing anymore. I don't yeah. care how much is on the table. <laughs> yeah. And he never looked back. Yeah. Not good for him. Yeah. I've never actually seen him play. I've heard his name a lot. But I don't even, I don't really know much about him. His personality was probably his biggest uh, weapon. Just like crazy confidence. Send me the fucking ball. <laughs> so I'm going to put it away. Gnarly arm. His wrist didn't bend backwards. So, because he broke it when he was a kid. So he just hits the crap out of it and like miss hits it. And just will like have the gnarliest spin either way. <laughs> and just ace people. and hit the. He got NCAA player of the year. Really? Yeah. His was it senior. SC? Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, so we had him and Murphy Troy. We got NCAA. Jeez. Year. So I never got set. I was like, <laughs> fuck the indoor. I'm going to the beach. <laughs> yeah. Riley won't set me. I'm out of here. Then Hayden set you every ball. Yeah. <laughs> Transition two, service. Everything, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Did he even try to force you onto every ball? <laughs> oh, my God. No. Oh. Uh, listen. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, uh, yeah, how well you were able to... You and Johnny were a great team. It kind of played into my game, though, Hayden style, because I used to play middle blocker, too. So, like, hitting quicks, like yeah. threes and ones and all that was, like, kind of my game. Yeah. Just slap it down. And yeah, him and Sean play. Scott. And they, Sean Scott. They developed that, um, that type of uh, style of play. You know, mainly, I don't know if, you know, John's setting is – I love John. He's just not, you know, a great setter, but they figured out a way to – 
at the quick speed offense kind of worked in transition. Yeah, well, it's kind of funny because as much as Hayden like gets shit for his bump chowder, um, he is the best on two setter I've ever played with. Yeah, I mean, I can freaking come down. He's laying out for a cut shot, and he'll like slide into it and just and shoot it right into my wheelhouse, and I can just like. Because we never played, bro. Never. We never you. played, dude. We oh, never played together, oh, dude. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll upgrade you that. it from John, I'll dude. Give you, that. you can do it, but yeah. I don't know better. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> he was better. Like he could dig off hard driven and set me. That's yeah. Like, as, how much he wanted. He's to a do. great hard the driven. Up and down, now. like was not his favorite, but yeah, I got offensive player of the year off that. You did, and rookie of the year. He just stepped close well and yeah. blocks nowhere to be found. Yeah, that was two two thousand thirteen. But it's funny because Hayden sets every ball in practice. Warm up hand set. Warm ups all hand set. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it either. Why don't you? Just, yeah. Uh, I will say I wish I freaking he he wouldn't have given me anything else because I think he knew he was giving me so much information and he's like this freaking kid's getting all this info that took me fifteen years to learn. <laughs> uh, but I wish I learned defense more. You know, he didn't give me anything. He didn't even let me dig a ball. <laughs> Evie, why are you hitting that try? He's a blocker. Make him block. So I'm like back here in the back court, like, damn, I wish I like learned something from Hayden. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's smart. Like, it seems to be in the right places, educated, leveraging, and stuff like that. Yeah. He does a good job. For sure. It's crazy how long ago that was. That was almost 10 years ago that you started playing with John. Yeah. Dang, that's nine years. <laughs> yeah. And you were saying you were going to retire before that. Look at you now. Yeah, Here look at are. me now. You're starting to. The hell am I chapter. doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Later, though. Yeah. I mean, shoot, at one point it was like you could probably count the Olympics out. Yeah, for sure. When I when I asked Phil to play uh, in 2015, I was counting it out. I was like, I'm over it. I'm yeah. over it. Because in 2012, we really made a good run, Furby and I. Yeah. And to get you know so close and to not make it, I was like, uh, I don't want to do this again. And then you ended up getting to. Pretty dang close with Theo. Theo, yeah, Theo and I were in a good spot. You know, point to where it's like, yeah, you might as well go for this. For, for sure. sure. But then um, I was like, man, I like, I, I want to like try and win some tournaments. And with Theo, you could, right? Like yeah. he's, but you know, so I was like, oh, I'll just throw it out there to Phil. I mean, he's the yeah, come on. The good is it? yeah, I think American so. Blocker. For sure. I think so. For sure. Yeah. yeah. There's no offensively blocking. There's I have you know. So how was it to to set that guy? This is awesome. Just throw it up there. That's what it seemed like. Throw it up there, dude. Like, uh, nice and high. Anyway. Yeah. There's no one like him. I'm not sure there'll be anyone. You know, on the world tour, there's some ridiculous players, especially now. But Yeah, I'd say the, no one has his style particularly, but Anders is probably the only one that you could compare. Uh, yeah. It's a different style of play, but like in terms of like this guy that can drop get up armpits and then drop and dig you with a pokey. Yeah. And then like hand set you from his knees. Yeah. Perfectly. Oleg's he's pretty he's not too far off. He's crazy yeah. athletic. And he's goofy footed like Phil, has that gnarly jump serve. Yeah. Phil has a weird touch though that's Yeah. He's like a defender. Yeah. Oh it's it's so demoralizing. <laughs> like, you know, you played against him for so long. Yeah. But like freaking he'll knuckle pokey yeah, dig you from his pocket <laughs> dropping. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like you're already the six ten <laughs> thin beast, and then you do that. It's like, come on, ridiculous. Yeah. And you guys made a final split blocking. <laughs> yeah. A full AVP. It was it's awesome. Crazy. That was one of my greatest achievements uh, <laughs> at a tournament because we beat we beat Jake and Taylor, Casey and Theo. It was awesome. Fifteen to four against Casey and Theo. Can we, can we ask now uh, what was in the Gatorades? Was it Gatorade oh man, it was super souped up vodka and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull. All, all. I was like, man, why don't we do this more, Phil? <laughs> it's working. Yeah, and I remember we because we played John and uh, Ryan in the finals, and I think it was close, like nineteen nineteen. Yeah. And yep. Phil wanted to block so bad. He's like, we're scoring points when I'm up there. I was like, no man, let's just do this. I'd be like this it. with Ryan trying because John would just shoot. Man, I was jumping backwards as high as I yeah. could. With, uh... <laughs> and John set the record. Uh, that was his last win, I think. Oh, no. Did he win one since? Yeah. The oldest uh, player ever. Didn't he win one? Uh... Maybe he extended that. I can't remember. I'm not sure. 
Because that would have been, what, that was 2018? Yeah. That you guys? 2018. Uh, you guys 2017. 17. 2017. I think you won another. Yeah, because I was announcing that. I was on the broadcast. Yeah, 2017. I think he won one after that. And he should have won in Hawaii. Oh, that was brutal. In 2019. He was playing with Theo? Yeah. They're up 2015 at the freeze. Oh, fuck, freeze. Yeah. Are they going to keep the freeze, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I, don't, I mean, it was good. I thought it was good. It's funny because fans. Fan, fans love it. They do. And, I don't but like I think it. players hate it. Yeah, I don't well, like it. If you're it. a top yeah. team that's usually winning at the end of the match, you hate it. Yeah. yeah. If you're a lower ranked team that's usually losing, you like it, right? Yeah. Makes but, sense. I mean, the rule, fans, when they made the rule, I said it was to make it a better experience for the fans. And I think if that's the reasoning, it's, hey, <laughs> it's worked. It's a business. <laughs> it's lived up to it. Yeah. We always say that, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. the best business we can. Yeah, I'm curious if they're going to they're gonna keep it. Uh, we did have a call with Bally's recently, and they kind of went over a bunch of the, the stuff uh, just upcoming season. It was like the first time that the Bally's guy, um, Adi, I want to say his name, um, came on and talked to us with uh, the new CEO of the ABP. Albert Lau. Albert Lau. Albert Lau. Yep. <laughs> he's uh man, he's he's been through the last six or seven regimes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so he knows. Um, I mean, he knows the game. He knows what, I guess, what doesn't work because it hasn't worked for <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> however long. He's definitely an expert on that. Is this yeah. the most events that you've had on an AVP schedule? No, in two thousand, up until two thousand ten, there was. I think um, they had it up to sixteen events, and then like the King of the Beach, and then top eight teams. Okay. So when we first started playing, two thousand three, there there was um, a hand fourteen events, okay. fourteen to sixteen. Okay. And then were you playing FIVB at that time? No, no. We, Phil and I played two FIVB and, uh, FIVBs in two thousand five because uh, Raji picked up Phil for World Champs when Sean got hurt. Ah. Uh-huh. So they played, and Phil's like, "Oh, we should do Paris and Klagenfurt." So we played two of those. Nice. And at the time. You had to play in a certain amount of events to get... They only gave you half your money at the FIVB, and you had to play in a certain amount of uh-huh. events to get the bonus pool, it was called, which is the other uh-huh. half of your money, yeah. which I think was to promote the U.S. players from skipping their right, right, right. domestic tours to play uh, internationally. Right. Gotcha. So, yeah, 2005 was our first, but then I didn't play again until... Well, Sean Scott and I lost about five country quotas. Oh. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, brutal. Yeah. I it's, think that probably retired Sean in itself. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, him and John, uh, I thought we were going to make a run. They were so good uh, for however long they played. I know, they never really got the credit because um, they didn't go on the world tour. Yeah. It's crazy how teams that don't make the Olympics don't get the recognition. Because like, yeah. I was just a barely a fan of the sport. You know, I watched from the outside. Whatever you put in front of me, I'm seeing. And to me, it was I saw Rosenthal and Gibb and Jake and or, um, Phil and Todd. Yeah. And, like, I had no idea that Nick and Furby were, like, right there yeah. in the mix the whole yeah. time. And then Sean and John, like, two of all those top guys were, like, fully respected as one of those top teams as well. But yeah. it's crazy how the narrative, like, if you're not on the Olympic team, which I hate, uh, it just, like... Rightfully so. You get yeah. ousted. That's what I loved. When we had, uh, when we had Taylor <coughs> on the podcast right before the Olympics... He was talking about how the Olympics, it's, it's an awesome accomplishment to qualify. He's like, I want it to be bigger what we do on the AVP. Yeah. Like the NBA guys, the Olympics is just like a vacation bonus for yeah. them. Right, exactly. The NBA is what they care about. He's like, I want the AVP to be as big as, for us, as the NBA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which would be, which would be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't be going international much anymore. Yeah. I guess we would maybe to go get that Olympic thing, but. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, curious because the AVP and USA Volleyball are teaming up now. Yeah, so that I think most of that has to do with the um, the point system because USA Volleyball has such a strong youth, uh, whatever, uh, developmental system or whatever. So now people can play in USA events or AVP events and get the same points, and basically the whole thing works up to the pro tour. Okay. So yeah. It's kind of 
I was wondering. I didn't know what that would look like because when they announced the the partnership, it was just like a bunch of very gray You're not gonna statements. It was like we're really excited about two organizations partnering up and doing big things in the sport. And I was like, I, I don't know what any of this means. Well, it is big, <laughs> just in the sense that they're on the same page and like helping each other rather than hurting each other. Yeah, because that's what yeah. was hurting us before is when they were butting heads. It was like we had no room for growth because <coughs> one was just going to pull the other back. Um, so just the partnership alone, at least the label, I don't know, might help, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Can't hurt. It's a step in the right direction. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Have mm-hmm. you taken a look at what your schedule might look like this year? Obviously, it's hard because the FIVB is changing yeah. every day. <laughs> it yeah, changes this least morning. AVP, we have, like, would you and Andy be playing, you guys going to play the, the tour series, the lower ones? That's the the middle one? The lowest. Uh, what's the prize so, money for first and second? That I don't know. I think I it's mean, a 50 grand total. Yes, yeah, so a 25 so, split. So probably five for first. When if Andy it, Andy got second last year. Yeah, but he said he um, split like three. No, no. I think it was six something. Yeah, six something. He said it was the most money he's ever made. Yeah. But um, I asked, who was I talking to? They said they doubled it at the last minute, the prize money. Okay. Because he was saying, oh, it was 25, and we got this for second. Yeah. I mean, you know, if it's close, I'll play, I'll play any event to make money, yeah. Dude, depending. Can you imagine if we had the Grand Slams and Opens still this whole the last four years? Yeah. How much more money would we have made? Yeah, it's tough. It's um, amazing. <laughs> making money in this uh, sport. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, it wasn't, though, right? Back in the day, it was... You could be number nine on the AVP tour and yeah. do, be doing pretty pretty damn well. Yeah. Back in the Johnny Jamba days. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Jamba. That was, that was a pretty good sponsor for him. Yeah. <laughs> What's been your biggest sponsor? Um, I've only had a handful. Uh, da, da, da. Under Armour was a good sponsor when I first yeah. teamed up with Phil. Yeah. So that's yeah, probably my biggest money sponsor, but USA Volleyball has been... Yeah, my yeah. biggest sponsor, and right. now Florida State, yeah. with uh, my wife and her job. Yeah, so they should be pretty good. But uh, who's that? Florida State. Yeah, they're going to be they're ranked what? Like number three, three four, three. Four? Relax, three. <laughs> Jeez, come on, yeah, no, yeah, USC and UCLA. They'll, uh, you know, same top two. Yeah, USC kept all their girls. That girl got fourth in the Olympics is going to play again for some reason. Yeah, how the heck is she just, still playing? She just wants to live it up. Yeah, good for her. SC was pretty fun. Yeah. I'm sure the parties aren't as good now, though, with all this COVID stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, ride her out. <laughs> she doesn't have a mask. I'm going to be taking pictures or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Nick's going to be oh. at the 9 the, the bar, the Suspended school bar. for the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, from what I heard, yeah, they're keeping their whole their whole squad, so it'll be tough. But Florida State has great great uh, group of kids. They got a couple transfers, um, yeah. one from Pepperdine, one from Berkeley, and a couple good freshmen. So it's fun. I've been able to work with them and good kids. Yeah, how's yeah. Uh, summer Nash been? And summer has been the awesome. Placement of, of Jason Lockhead. Oh, big upgrade, big time <laughs> upgrade. <laughs> you can understand what she's saying most of the time. <laughs> Ginger Cat, you kind of had to be like, what? You know? Ginger <laughs> Cat. Uh, summer is, uh, I'm a big fan, big fan of Summer, and um, I think she's adapting to the team in Tallahassee yeah. pretty well. Ginger's missed all the way around, and it's just one of my dearest friends, and uh, but now he's living it up in New Zealand. Yeah, that's kind of the dream job for him, right? For sure. Kind of came full circle. Yeah. And he's... Yeah. Is he like the? I could live in New Zealand. What is he doing there? Is he like head of their national program now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's um, the head of the national program, building up, you know, their youth and developmental. No one knows what he's doing. He's <laughs> probably playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Somehow he's he's. Uh, they have some good talent out there, though. Like some decent talent. They've had the O'Day brothers for yeah. a while, and yeah, uh, like I, when I went out there, played against a bunch of them, and like there's some. Serious potential, but they have no, they've never had any support really. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like financially paying for their, them to travel around the world. And I think he's kind of getting the opportunity to start that and do it in the right way for, for them. So it could be, 
They could be a legit. Uh, there's some yeah. gnarly athletes that come out. Of I think Ben like, O'Day is freakishly. Uh, he's a freak. Athletic. Uh, Sam oh, too. Uh, it sounds like long and like yeah. really good smooth. Hands. They just need to like. Like well, they, they, I don't think they play. Connection. They're they're playing uh, together. Yeah. They they can't do the problem it. Problem is they're the best two players. Yeah, I, don't I, think they play well I got to speak with uh, Ginger Cat a couple weeks ago, and um, he said they got a couple of youth uh, or young guys that are pretty athletic. Okay, that yeah. so they split them. They split Ben and Sam up, and um, you know he's all. He, he says he thinks going to be good, and on the win- women's side as well. Sweet. So, it's yeah, good for I, New I Zealand. Can see some some decent New Zealand teams coming out in the next. There few were a couple years. good teams in the One Stars last year. Hmm. Well, what was what was crazy is that they got stuck. They couldn't get back to New Zealand because oh, yeah. of the COVID protocols. Because oh, wow. you had to do like a fourteen day yeah. quarantine in a hotel, and you so you had to book your hotel every time you went. You left the country. You had to pretty much preemptively book your hotel. But they were on the road for like two or three months, right. and so they were trying to go back but all the hotels were booked up yeah and so one of them like took a nannying job in croatia while she was just waiting oh geez yeah they were stuck so being in new zealand's tough right now it is <laughs> yeah you gotta stay there yeah you, uh yeah. you gotta stay that's there's so many of those stories in beach volleyball i feel like where people just leave and like get stuck or they're broke and sleeping on couches and nannying or yeah, I've been there. It's just the life. <laughs> I can't imagine sleeping on a couch now. Uh, spoiled nowadays. Yeah. I've been spoiled my whole career, for the most part. <laughs> you timed it well. I did. I put in my time real quick on the... Uh, well, that's one good thing of going overseas first, if you're indoor, because you have to make a few bucks, and then you come back, and you have like at least a few-month window. I think yeah. I had like a solid year. I could have lived very cheaply... Uh, yeah, mooching off Gabby and living in <laughs> places for free. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I had like a nice little window there where I where I could make a little money and then timed it well. But yeah, some people on that grind. Yeah, does it surprise you how long you've been you've been playing? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm, pr- I'm so fortunate. Um, but yeah, I never thought I'd uh, be doing it yeah. this long. Um, and so, yeah, who knows? It's, it's, um, it's cool. And I still enjoy it. Like coming out here, getting to train against these guys and see, I mean, there's so much, uh, I'm hopeful for like, uh, the youth and stuff for, uh, beach volleyball. So just getting to be a part of it for a little bit longer is pretty special, at least for me. Yeah. I know. Yeah, for sure. There's uh, some... Big shoes to fill now that your generation is kind of fading out. And you know, throw you in there, you know, yeah. Fill like, yeah. Because, I mean, the guys that are left right now, like, we haven't really collected too many medals uh, up to the standard that, that the Phil's and Jake's and you and Jesse yeah. and them have, have set. So it's like, it's kind of go time. <clears throat> yeah, and I think even before Phil and Jake, there was like a lull. Mm-hmm. Of uh, U.S., I think Nygaard and, and Dane got one. Stein and Kevin might have gotten one or two. But Fanoi and Dane got hot at the exact right moment. The, the only hot. tournament that really matters, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, um, yeah, that, I think that's the only tournament they won together yeah, that's overseas. Wild. And it's just Loyola crazy. hates that. I'm sure he, he does. Their only medal. Uh, together? Yeah, I'm Maybe. not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think Loyola was the one seed in that. Like, he was the favorite to win that Olympics. Yeah. And Dane and Fanoi win it. Yeah. Like, a team that he, I'm, I'm guessing, beat up on on the AVP for the most part. I mean, uh, I can imagine. Who, was Jose playing with uh, Zamarco or? Emmanuel. It was Jose and Emmanuel that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were the favorite. Oh. And they were so freaking good that whole year. I don't even know like, who, beat, who beat them. Did Dane and uh, Fanoi beat them? No, him? they lost to... Uh, I think these Spanish guys, Jose, said they just went on this serving tear. Yeah. And I can't, I can't really understand the format of it because they only played two matches. So they might just not have broken pool. Um, but they <clears> lost <throat> like 17-15. And then that was, that was it. Oh. Yeah. Which is yeah. brutal. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah. I mean, but my, my, my point was like then Jake and uh, Phil come in and now U.S. is winning. You know, they're expected to kind of win on that. Yeah. On that side, and now they're gone, and now you know 
uh, I'd say Try is uh, Try is probably I think uh, the best blocker for the men right now. And then you got these group of guys that are coming in, Taylor Sanders, and yeah. I'm sure there's a Theo. Theo's always been freakishly. Andy's been on the rise quick. If he can stay on and the track, and you yeah, Andy. Andy's awesome. I mean, what? Uh, I he's think he's going to be sure. going to be really good and, yeah. and um, willing to learn, listens, like um, is okay with feedback, yeah. and um, yeah, he just needs to be kind of pointed in the right direction. Yeah, good kid. Big fan of him, man. Oh, he's. I love Andy. Yeah, he's one of the best. For sure. He is, and unfortunately, I think maybe one of the first times I met Andy, we were competing against each other, and uh, I, I remember yelling at him. <laughs> he, uh, I hit he, a ball he out. A different beast. A completely and different. And I person. thought me and Phil thought it was a touch. He said it wasn't. Uh, I was like, oh, liar! <laughs> <laughs> I felt so. I felt so terrible. terrible. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, is it? Uh, and um, I was like, man, that's my first impression. But Andy has of me, and uh, <laughs> I've been apologizing for months uh, ever since, <laughs> three years. But uh, he got to say he came to Florida last couple weeks ago, and nice. He's awesome. Just my loves my like kids loved him. Was playing video games with him, kind of speaks their language. Right. I was like having a fourth kid, <laughs> and then I was like, man, I'm 16 years older than him. That's is he closer to Gunner's age or? Yours. I didn't think about that, but no, mine. <laughs> but pretty close. Yes, yeah, so they're Gunner and him are eighteen years apart, and oh, okay, gotcha. we're sixteen. Thank you. I'm pretty thank sure with Hayden, I was closer. Yeah, I was closer to Sam's age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah She's is like you? What? It's thirteen. Uh, so she was 13, eight. Thirty-two. Yeah. Travis, you good, man? <laughs> <laughs> no. <Anyone? Yeah. laughs> I write for a reason, man. Yeah, whatever. It'll take too long. Yeah. But it's it's been going well with Andy. Yeah, it's been going well. Um, it's been uh, you know coming out here was the first week we've kind of gone against any teams. Okay. So okay. there's definitely a learning curve, and uh, you know, we added Jordan Chang to the as a coach and stuff, and um, it's all new for me. I've been playing with the same guy for six years, playing with the best offensive player and right. blocker. So. Um, you know, I'm trying to have a different mindset with it, like as far as it's going to take some time and learning. Yeah. But then, you know, you, you get competitive and yeah. ego kind of kicks in. And I'm like, dang, am I too old to be doing this? <laughs> but I, I think it's been going real well, and Andy's doing a really good job. And I think he's going to be good, you know, moving forward for, for USA Volleyball. Yeah. So it's tough for the men, I think, to kind of get young uh, blockers to get out here and play. Because there's just no pipeline, there's no real funding or money for, you know, Yeah. kind of got to put the time in. And I think it's going to even be harder now with the way the FIVB set up. Yeah. yeah. If the Continental Tours come back, it would make it, it would smooth a lot of things over. Like if we, had, if we had Norsekas back, that would be an easy way for like a Kristen and Taryn to get points or, you know, Yeah. Or, that's true. I forgot we had that. Me and Hayden. Yeah, we played a, we a couple. Open. Cause that's how I got started, yeah. and then that was made it really easy to get into events. But Norseka hasn't done anything in the last two years, so it's. But the CEV has been pretty good with putting on events, and I mean even like the Asian Continental, like yeah. they put on their championships. But Norseka has just been. I think they're totally gonna, absent. because the, so. the world champs, that you know they get four spots, um, whatever the Continental. Uh, get four spots into it, and so eventually they're gonna have to start running some some sort of events to see who would qualify for those spots. Yeah, I hope they come back. I heard they were. One of my buddies in Canada said that they're hosting one this year, but then oh, really? I, just, I just haven't seen a schedule. So you always hear stuff that's gonna happen. You never know when it is. I just don't know why the system ever changed. Like I'm looking back to. I mean, I'm sure there was good reason. I don't know. But Grand Slams, Opens, and Norsecas was great. Because like, yeah. coming up, we grinded on Norsecas. We did well enough, made a few finals, got us into the country photos and the Opens, yeah. and then we did well there, and then we got up. Yeah. I'm not sure. if uh, I remember, like, Connus trying to take control. Remember him? Yeah. So he wanted his major series, and he won. Uh, yeah. I think it was fine until that kind of, the major series kind, and they wanted to separate themselves that's when I felt like it started going, you know, down. 
Because it was sweet with the Grand Slams, Open Series, and then uh, they wanted to make it into something like every event, like Klagenfurt was, and they kind of had their own idea. And yeah. So. Klagenfurt was pretty nice, though. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's the best tournament. What was the what was the most fun Klagenfurt? Uh, your first one with. Or how did you do with Phil? Your first in 05 when you went. Uh, was that your second FIB? Third. Uh, uh, Klagenfurt was our. So we played Paris and Klagenfurt back to back, and um, the Klagenfurt event. Funny story. Um, I guess Phil, we you know it was double elimination back then. We lost our first match, and so you didn't play the next day. Well, Dane Blanton and Kevin Wong won their pool, and Phil and I were in our uh, hotel room, kind of um, getting ready for bed, and you know we get a knock on the door, and it's Dane uh, saying, "Hey, we're gonna go out," and at the time we're like, "Oh, it's Dane Blanton. <laughs> we we can't say no." The gold medalist. Yeah, we can't say no, <laughs> and um, so we're like, "Let's go out," and uh, we ended up drinking a lot. And we were we got smashed the next day, lost. And I remember whoever was the head of the Federation uh, for Canada came up to Phil and I and said, "You know, you guys, uh, your disappointments. You think this is uh, yada yada yada." Uh, I remember he gave me and Phil a big lecture. And so, um, you know, still was it, Ed? it wasn't Ed. It was a guy I, I, that that's oh, not yeah. around uh, volleyball anymore. Yeah. And um, you know, Phil and I were just like. But, uh, at, at, you know, it was free beer, so we didn't know. So they had these cooler <laughs> full of Zyphers or whatever. So Phil and I both had, like, four right here in our pockets. Yeah. And we, we thought, you know, we just went out and, and had a lot of fun. Because they usually have, like, events every night. Yeah. Oh. And I remember we lost to Argentina the next day. And um, we got smashed. But we were pretty, uh, it probably wasn't the smartest thing to do. <laughs> but we learned, we learned our, our lesson. Great, great story. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was, uh... <laughs> nah, those were so crazy, though. Yeah. And I probably, I, I got the tail end of it. I think I went to three, the last three or so. They were pretty nice. I've yeah. heard they're amazing. They the were. Klagenfurt's. Klagenfurt yeah. was, and Vienna was, um, was awesome as well. Did you get to play in Vienna? Yeah. Well, the more recently? Yeah, uh, I guess, well, I'm not sure when the last one they had Vienna. there. Well, oh, they're, that, they're, that was Vienna where you broke yeah. your hand? Yeah, so I thought the crowd there in Austria, it's just... Oh, yeah, that stadium was bumped. That's why I punched the pole. I was so stoked because we beat Austrians on center court in front of those crowd. Chased the cut out of bounds. Yeah! Punched the pads. <laughs> just like in the... I just double punched the, the ref stand pads. And it was like half an inch thick with like bars crossing in the back and just like clipped my... Oh, so stupid. But... <laughs> I punch pads. Yeah. It's funny because Waller and Seidel, they had a great year too. Because I'd never really heard of them prior. Well, I'd heard of Robin Seidel because yeah. he played in 2016 in Rio. Yeah. Um, but I hadn't seen Philip Waller play. I was like, oh, this should be a good draw for try. And I was like, damn, these yeah, guys are good. so good. No, yeah, they give everyone a run for the money. Like, yeah. they don't get the good finishes, but no one's like safe. Yeah. Against them. Yeah. Waller's like comes out with his freaking like Mickey Mouse hat. Or yeah, whatever. it's like yellow <laughs> and uh, like, uh, what are the, the do, 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 Pac-Man? Yeah, yeah. Pac-Man ghost song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's good. He flies and and Robin's been playing forever. I remember the first time we played him, he was playing with a guy named Zan. He took uh, Zan. He took did he take third or fourth in the Rio or the last Brazil event? Oh, Zanny Hooper? Yeah, he got yeah. third with uh, Chris Dress. Yeah, <laughs> and so he's 5'7 uh, yeah, and like 130 pounds. And Furby and I were warming up. And I was like, oh, dream draw. Dream draw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was like 16 14 in a third. I think Robin blocked me. We won, but uh, Robin blocked me like 10 times. I couldn't see what he was doing. And yeah. Zandy dug 1,000 balls. Yeah. And that was my introduction to them. I was like, dang it. Robbie's probably pound for pound the, one of the best blockers in the world. Yeah, he's in terms he's because he's what like six. He can't be a six four six maybe. Foot. I say six. No, he's yeah, six. Oh, he, six three. Oh, six, he's four. that tall. Okay. Yeah, yeah. jumps just, pretty well. But like that's really small on the world tour. Like, yeah. Even I'm undersized. Six five. Yeah, I think Smedens is probably my pound for pound pick for blocker. For just like best one of the best overall. 
He does everything well, really well. Overall player, yeah. yeah. Blocker, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, he does. His, his moves aren't that. Like, obviously really great. But, like, there's a few guys that are better. Yeah. Pound for pound, I think. Blocking. Yeah. But he can do it <coughs> oh, drinking and smoking cigarettes <laughs> at every tournament. And brings gas. It's just like, uh, yeah. he's a machine. Yeah. At one point, they were number one in the world, right? Yeah, for a couple years. I think they got a bonus for... For being the uh, number one team, so they played in like every yeah, event. That's kind of BS. Yeah. But like they held, they had, they held the number one ranking, like the true ranking, for yeah. a little bit there. But it wasn't like they were the number one team every year. They just played in every event. Yeah, yeah. but they were <laughs> really consistent. I'm I'm surprised that they're um, they're playing uh, again um, this year. I thought maybe Tux and uh, and. Um, What's his, uh, who you were talking about? Smedens. Smedens, yeah. They would play. Because Smedens has a ridiculous, I can see him playing full-time D. Yeah. Oh, for sure, yeah. Just roping his uh, jump serve. Yeah, that's true. So, and I know, I know, uh, someone else, like, has always wanted to play with his brother. Okay. So, maybe, I, maybe it's for just for this year, or they're doing another three years. Yeah, they definitely haven't been improving. Yeah, but now they're running that offense. Marco's coaching them. Who was coaching um, Adrian and Ricardo. Adrian and them and oh Marco yeah now oh, Ricardo's coaching uh, Adrian and Enrico did you see that he is yeah yeah I didn't know that uh, yeah did he leave Florida I think so I think he's out there with them really yeah huh I'm curious uh, how that's gonna go because I think Adrian I think they're doing a training camp in Brazil right now mm-hmm. um, which would make sense for Ricardo to be with him. Right. I mean, I figure Ricardo's playing for another six years. <laughs> he doesn't. Seriously. He doesn't have to jump. It can just. His wrist is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> wow, he's gonna coach. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I think that'll be a fun team. Adrian Rico, they're always fun to watch. Yeah, they're annoying to play. Yeah. Very. Exactly. Uh, especially with the offense they run. I loved your match with them in Cancun. You and Adrian had such a good back and forth the whole oh. time. <laughs> I mean, Adrian serve in that wind was uh, freaking. Did you guys play against them we in made, Mexico? Like, all three <clears throat> semifinals. No, we didn't draw them. Yeah, that's uh, with that's because uh, that's, that's perfect scenario. Perfect scenario. Yeah. And their ball control and the way they, yeah. the way they were, yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a. I think we smashed them, so I'm okay with that. You beat them pretty good. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he's uh, he's special. I mean, that kid is uh, pretty crafty. Yeah, it's crazy. Sure. <laughs> and then um, you play the Swedes yet? The Sweden no, guys? I haven't played them yet. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to play them because most people when they um, most guys when they come in they try to do all this shitty stuff they just burn themselves out. But they seem to be one of the teams that kind of uh, has done it well enough to yeah make it work. Oh, we'll see. Oh, and they're yeah. young enough. Oh, we got some uh, some hooligans showing up on set. <laughs> hey, dude. Oh, that makes sense now. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's, that's the next podcast. The uh, uh, guests are. No, you don't have to stay outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Jesus. Um. Yeah, but where are we at? Just uh, Trevor's game kids. kind of declining the and uh, <laughs> hold up. Yeah. You know, I think there's still hope for him. It's getting heavier and heavier. I know, oh, man. I don't know your back. <laughs> Spree through it. Spree through it. It's going to be all right. I've been doing heavy deadlifting now and training for this season. <laughs> um, can I say something about their... I, I, I was at the gym today, and um, I saw a couple athletes that work out with uh, your trainer. Yeah. And they were, like, synchronized... I can't even explain what they it's were doing. <laughs> but everything was synchronized. They're doing it all together. All together. Reading and all that. Well, and it was a lot of band movement, leg kicking, arms flailing. Yeah. I almost wanted to Connecting record it. All the parts. <laughs> you should. Yeah. But I was like, man, maybe that's what we were missing. You didn't know uh, what you were missing when you came out to the gym. You see Kristen and Taryn just <laughs> chucking balls. Chucking fastballs. <laughs> and you come out and see Mikkel's <laughs> disciples doing whatever they do. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> A lot of people are driving up now. Huh? The girls, at least. There's yeah. Girls that yeah, I won't mention names. Drive. But I couldn't stop staring. 
I couldn't believe it. The breathing gets a little ridiculous. When I, you I, uh, you up the breathing I heard about uh, the breathing. Snake breathing? Yeah, it's like the boxer's breathing, you know? Yeah. Track. It's like the track. Yeah. Yeah. But now, uh, which I get. But now you hear all these, like, this new things coming out, these functional movement things where you, you breathe a certain way. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's been done. Yeah. For years. But do you and Trevor do that stuff? Like, are you guys in I'm sync to get with. Trevor to drive up, but, uh, I think that's the missing, missing piece, bro. <laughs> We don't sync up our breaths. <laughs> What's your workout regimen looking like? Push ups, you're crunches, still, dude. You're still really fit. Yeah, dude. When are you going to get soft and old? Um, the Sean Scott path, you mean? Yeah, exactly. It's coming. Sean Scott path, the keg. Listen, the guy was a machine. I've been trying to build him up for years to get him uh, what he used to be. He was but, a uh, the bot on tour. Yeah. 100%, like eight pack. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, we're, I'd still do just Olympic lifting and yeah. stuff like that. Stuff that's worked for me in the, in the past. Just whatever I see Trevor do in the gym, I try to do a little more. <laughs> it's been working for me for years. I need to, I told Trevor, listen, if he takes 30 pounds up top and can put it in his legs, <laughs> It's gonna be even more unstoppable. Distribute them down to the toothpicks. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> working on it. Yeah. No, but you even. I mean, you've gotten. You've increased your um, workout load a lot over the years, right? Yeah. Did you have? Would you pick that up from or just just because it worked for you? Just because it works. I mean, and you if lift uh, on game day sometimes. I do. I, I learned. Uh, uh, like I feel, you know, trial and error, right? Um, when we practice, I'd rather do a workout before practice. I feel a lot more springier. So I figured, um, you know, why not try and during the the weeks during the, the games? And, and I feel like it's worked for me. Yeah. Now, it's hard to maintain kind of like on a longer tournament and, you know. But if it, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. So hopefully it'll last a little longer. Yeah. I started doing working out before. Because I think when we talked, last time we had you on the podcast, I think you were talking about that. And when me and Adam hit the road, I was like, yeah. might as well try it. And then yeah. I started playing What are you, what are, yeah. I just do like a 30-minute, like pretty light yeah, that's stretch. All. And then just, like you said, just feel springer. You're just like kind of primed to yeah. go. Yeah, so, I mean, I've been pretty fortunate to be kind of injury-free for a lot of years. It seems like that's been the key to uh, increasing the, age of all of our athletes like when yeah. you were on tour the 40 was like you're done yeah Karch Except was Karch. yeah but he was I still think like 43 44 and he was like an outlier like yeah the oldest ever to like be any good right correct and so because when I first came out I was like oh these are the old guys they're all gonna retire yeah like in their late 30s perfect they're all gonna retire soon now I'm in my you know, <laughs> 30s, yeah. approaching 33. Yeah, bro, you, you got another 10 years, dude. Around. You got another 10 years. <laughs> I know, but I'm kind of in that boat, like where you guys were at in your early 30s, like, all right, I'm going to retire in my late 30s. I don't know if I want to go a whole another 12 years or so. Yeah. I mean, if you, you enjoy keep making you, you enjoy playing, then yeah. I think you'll continue to do year it. Year by year. It's a pretty damn good job. It is. Not bad watching the dolphins swim by in the morning while I stretch. Yeah. It's a little tempting to get out there in the surf, but luckily it's freezing cold, so <laughs> yeah. I don't actually want to go. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. How often are you coming out here to train? Well, or is what Andy doing like one week? Yeah, so Andy's, there, Andy's been out. a couple weeks down in Florida, <laughs> and I've come out here a handful of times. It's my third time coming out. So however often my wife lets me come out, I'll come out. Gotcha. And I was not shy about being excited to come out this week. Because <laughs> um, we got three kids. She's in season. I'm helping out. And I was like, all right, Brooke, good luck. Good luck to you. I'll be back in eight days. <laughs> yeah. Did you tell her that you were going to stick around for the, the newest episode of Drinking Whiskey with the Crabs? No, I told her I was doing a night session of uh, volleyball practice. <laughs> So it's not going to come out tomorrow, right? No, not tomorrow. Oh, sweet. You're good for a few weeks. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I apologize then. <laughs> we'll give you some time. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can even time the episode to come out when you're back out here. There you go. <laughs> yeah. the same, same day, space. Brooke. I got there and did it. <laughs> yeah. That's actually why I stayed an extra day. It was for these guys. Uh, yeah. Who are Sue? 
Yeah, the crabs showed up in full suits for the sand cast. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm committed. I'm ready. So, you're going to edit that, right? We can edit that. Sweet. No, we don't edit. We, yeah. we, we're probably going to have to edit this next episode. The first episode we ever edit, yeah. all, ever. But we're going we're gonna to record a, a back-to-back tonight. So, those of you listening to this Nick Lucena episode... Yeah. Just, run it just back fast right forward. This, because uh, the next Wednesday, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. <laughs> but did uh, did you and Andy? Did you guys get into the Challenger in Mexico? Yeah. Okay. We're <laughs> way down there in the qualifier. Is deep. <laughs> I mean, That's I want to say we're like, I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're gonna play two hard teams if we, yeah. you know, we'll play one. I think we're 18, 19, 20. Something like that. Yeah. We're just ahead of uh, Taylor and Taylor, which is good. That was my goal, <laughs> just to be ahead of those guys in the qualifier. Yeah. So that's a win. That's a small win. <laughs> no. Yeah, that'll be good. So you got what, like a month? A little more than a month? Three. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, three weeks. We'll see unless they change it in a week or so, and then there's no tournament. <laughs> right. Who knows? Because the other one got, got canceled. Yeah. Which is a bummer. But. Yeah, I don't uh, know exactly what's going on. But um, it's exciting, kind of new new chapter. I mean, like you said, I mean, you you had played with Phil for so long. I mean, not even just you know, yeah. just going to a new skill set, but back in the quality. With Phil forever. I always said I would I would stop playing when I'm in the qualifier. Right. Yeah, you did. No, you yeah. said uh, you said I leave when Phil leaves. Correct. Those were your words. Listen, it's been tough. Uh, developing <laughs> new talent for us to deal with. You're gonna leave us with the freaking. I'm just like uh, there's nothing to do. I love Tallahassee, but I can't do anything over there. Volunteer. And raise three kids. I need something. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're excited. Something Keep so. On yeah, and it's fun. And you know, hopefully the AVP will, will have some events. Got a lot. Um, I heard you might be able to gamble on it. I'm not, not sure. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Through Bally's, they said they're working on it, but they need a year to like. I think that'll that'll help the sport grow. I think so. Sure. And then when I'm done, I can start gambling on. Uh, <laughs> you can be <laughs> throwing us texts. Everyone <laughs> trying to get all the inside info. <laughs> Well, time to take the fall. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see. I think uh, man, Andy's gonna be—he's gonna be a good kid, good player for for some time. Just yeah. you know, good blocker, handsets. Yeah, a little bit better than Trevor, and that's that's all you can ask for. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe uh, tries running defense behind Andy. Two thousand. Defense is pretty good today. I almost <laughs> yes, you can actually missed the ball with my platform and dug it with my quad almost. <laughs> <laughs> Sandman was coming in hot. When you have Trevor's block up there, it's a little. You feel like you're in a no man's land a little bit. <laughs> That's uh, um, so you guys were against uh, Taylor's partner. That boy he can hit. I'm uh, Sanders. Sanders. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. He's got a whip. It's an early on. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, we can uh, we can just combine this. We can bring them on. Come yeah, on, man. Let's uh, let's jump to our next episode. We, it's been nice to have Nick. And yeah, thanks for having me. Kick him off the show. Yeah, right. I'll just, uh, just I'll wrap s- it up. Have the boys come on. Yeah. Sweet. You want this? Oh, Nick, what you got? Shoot. Oh, thanks for having me, we're bro. We're gonna take a little drink break and then we're gonna bring you a special episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shoots. We're on.